moving on, we have uh, the quick build system. So this is much more uh, up to date. Um, and um, and the quick build system, this is this is a product that we have in stock. We, we're we selling at the moment. This is another customer down the road. He's just done the picture in the background that's just done um, uh, yellow quick build. How, how long have you been playing with this, Rich? It's probably, um, well, I, I guess this sort of helps people understand how, how we work, but there's obviously an element of testing and, and trialing products before it goes out to the customer. When it comes to you and it's available, really uh, when Simon's coming to you guys, it's a demonstration. It's already a, a proven product with a track record. So probably played with it for three years uh, and now it's been available for about a year within the industry. Good. OK, so it's a reasonably safe pair of hands, which is important to know in our industry. Um, we've got a couple of different types of product here, haven't we? Um, explain the difference, um, uh, the, the, the difference, Rich. OK, well, yeah, there are. There are two. So there's a, a surfacer and a sealer. Um, and interestingly, you have a base component and you change the 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 converter or the activator to make it do a different job. So in short, the sealer is a one coat system so it's like a wet on wet system really fast you can paint it after 15 minutes without sanding and then you have the surfacer which has got a bit more of a build to it so you would work from a, a sanded surface such as 180 and you would put three coats on and the beauty of the product is you can sand it after an hour and we've we've shown this repeatedly where we'll We'll lay the product down just before a lunch break. People will come back and it's ready to sand and top coat. So they both have a different function, but they really are the, the, the clues in the name. It's all about speed. So the, the, the surfacer, the surface is a bit more like 545 and, you know, you, you put it on and sand it. Um, how, how quickly can you sand it? It's an hour, but it, again, I'm working at about 23 degrees. But yeah, I guess I guess what we need to do with any new product is put it to a point where it makes sense to you guys hearing about them. So yeah, it's a good analogy to say it's similar to to five four five. So you know maybe use it on top of aged top coat or um, a GRP structure or maybe even aluminium. That's that's the sort of structure that you would put it on. Uh, it's not meant for overfillers, just to manage that expectation. But it's it's about a quick, quick system, really. And I noticed there we, we're used to in the all grip range. We're used to converter, which is up there on the left hand side and the base at the bottom activator. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about activator for those of us that might not come across it. Well, these these are all our sort of chemistry bits in the product. It's is a three component product. And actually, as we go forward, we'll see that with HDT as well. So this is all to do with the cure cycle and how the, the product works. And it gives us the ability to make it more tunable where we're able to adjust levels and make the product work in the way that we want it to. So it's just a, it's just different ke chemistry, really, Simon. So people are going to be getting used to having sort of three products as a system. So you've got a a converter and a, a surfacer or activator. So it's just a, a new bit of technology from us. And, and I guess it's going to take a bit of getting used to for the guys out there using it. I know I know most of our customers that are using it so far are using the the, the surfacer. So they're using it on smaller items, but instead of five or five and uh, they're getting on really well with it, uh, though we have got a couple of customers that are using both the surfacer and the sealer and we have to be quite careful at that point. Just worth noting the, the packs are quite similar, but the mix ratios are very different. So just worth um, keeping a keeping an eye on making sure you've got the uh, got the right thing there. So uh, um, I think um, uh, we've got some examples here, and Richard, I think this one was uh, this one was you. Tell us a little bit about what we're painting here, first of all. Yeah, well, actually, this sort of ties in with the story we were starting to tell, Simon, on the uh, on testing. This is actually a rudder off of one of the Volvo Ocean boats. I was, um, I don't know how you would term it, lucky or unlucky enough to follow the race. Uh, it was a great experience, uh, a year of following the race, helping them with paint supply and repairs. But what you're looking at here, really, um, for those of you out there that paint, is this is an orange rudder. Now, orange, whoever paints it, it is, is got quite poor opacity. And the beauty we have of this product is you're able to tint it different colours. And what you can see here, although it's quite difficult to see, is this is uh, an area in the middle that's the original sanded gloss top coat to uh, the primed area around the outside. So it shows how close we can get it to the top coat, enabling us to get sort of that effectively that commercial hide and allowing us to put the top coat on with less coats. 
So, for instance, Simon, if you had a yellow, uh, you might need up to seven coats to get that to cover because it just doesn't cover. But using something like the quick build to get you that hide or spot in those spot repairs to make everything a uniform colour really helps you with the top coat at the end. Um, that's, I think that's the finished the finished item. Is that all craft yeah. 2000 on there, Rich? Yes, yeah, it is. So basically the system was uh, the the rework, the, the quick build primer, followed by the SE base coat and then the, the clear coat over the top, which we were then able to flatten polish to a mirror like finish because, uh, you know, it's all about speed for these guys and and repeatability as well. We had to do seven boats. So that resulted in uh, in 14 rudders each time we repaired them. In interesting and that was the surfacer isn't it so that's the sandable product isn't it yeah absolutely yeah so we applied that before lunch we were able to sand it after an hour a se base coat flash that over clear coat job done so the boats you know sometimes we only had 24 hours to to make the repairs on these so we've been playing with this again in our spray seminars a little bit and the next image is of a aluminium mast and uh, here we have an aluminium mast section which um, we're just basing up in um, uh, in the sealer actually. With this. So this is the non-sand system, uh, Rich, isn't it? So the, um, we, we we're just basing that up, um, uh, and that this is the one that we can go over 15 minutes um, later. So we're we're seeing people like mast builders, some GRP manufacturers, and things like that using the sealer because they don't need to sand. They've got an aluminium extrusion. Uh, you can put the sealer straight onto uh, aluminium, can't you? Yeah, it's sealer straight onto aluminium. Um, the surfacer, you're, you're going to need a wash primer or something on there. But yeah, I mean, it, it's one of these things. We've got so many products, but hopefully this is going to help understand well, you know, what you might want to do. This is a this is all about speed and where you don't want a huge amount of um, film build as well. You're thinking that you might have a, a luff track or something on this area or that you're running uh, a sail through. So you, you these sort of products work really well when you just want a primer and a top coat. Yeah, the, I mean, you can see the shine on the video there as you went through. I mean, that that surfacer is almost like spraying a top coat, isn't it? In many ways, I know. I know with the mixing ratio, it's quite a lot thinner than the the the, the surfacing version, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I think it's you know one coat for the sealer compared to three of the uh, of the surfacer, but, but yeah, very different film builds between the two. Perfect. Okay. Um, what about schemes? How does it fit into a normal all grip scheme? <coughs> um, well, scheme wise, I think. This this is a big debate schemes, and I think we could, I could probably talk about this for hours. But the the point of um, schemes are picking the right product for the right job in hand, and that's why we have so many products available. And and yeah, that's the beauty of you guys out there helping in in marine wear, working every with everyone that's listening and or watching this at a later date. But the scheme for this product really would be aluminium from an aluminium substrate. So I'll give you an example. In the US, we have a customer that make 1800 boats a year and all of those are painted. Now, our old system just wasn't fast enough. They were looking for a fast, unique system. So they've gone with this type of product with SE and all craft 2000 clear coat over the top. But then we're able to put it on GP. So any of our friendly uh, yacht builders out there that are building GRP boats have the ability to make everything in white. And then they can offer a color change using a quick system with the uh, the sealer and then a, a, an SE base and a clear coat over the top. Or, of course, we can use it on aged top coat as well. I, I don't think we mentioned it and apologies if I didn't, but this is a is a polyurethane based primer as well. So it's a, a different chemistry to what you might be used to with the epoxy of 545. So should we be replacing 545 with this product or is 545 still the, the best of the best? You know, it's a stalwart of the industry, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not a replacement product. It's, it's to be very clear that this is meant for particular um, sort of applications. We, we have what we call good, better, best in everything that we do. We have good products, better products and the best products. Now, the epoxies are fantastic in what they do, but they take longer. If you have the time to do it, use the epoxy. But if you want a fast system, you've got an adaptable product here that you can use. And again, you know, this can this can go so many ways. We can look at hull warranties on new build boats. And if it's only a 12 month warranty, you know, you can use certain products. They might want a certain quality on that boat. So we have it's about adaptability, I guess, is what I'm trying to say with these sort of things. OK. 
Um, you mentioned colours, and we've seen a couple as we've been going through those in the, in the, in the various spray outs. But his picture of some of the colours, I think these are your panels, aren't they? Aren't they, Rich? Um, but, uh, or the, the AXO panels they take to the boat shows. So the, the, the various colours. We've, we've got, we start off with a, a list of colours that we have in stock here. Uh, how many of those? Uh, well, the, the actual base, the, the, the starters, you have six colours. So it's made predominantly from, from six colours on there. But we formulate those and we have 65 different variations. So it's, it's like mixing a top coat. You, you know, you use your bases, you mix them together to give you the formulation and colour that you want. So I think we have about 65 different formulations of reds, greys, blues to help you choose the right one for what you do. And we're probably, I take it, we're, we're still probably learning a little bit about the different mixes to match the different top coats uh, at the moment. I mean, we, we, I think we can mix those colours here uh, from the base colours and, and ship those out to you. But that you can the boat, can the can the applicator just mix the bases together as well? Yeah, it's going to happen. We're chefs, aren't we? At the end of the day, we're all <laughs> going to do it. But the the Volvo um, project is a really good example of that. That was just me doing it by eye, mixing the products together to get the match. And you know, if if the customer wants to go out there and buy all of the the, the six sort of base colours, they can mix their own. But we also have the ability that we can give them a choice of sixty five formulations that they can get made by their local distributions and and do it that way. So it's about choice. And people so are going to find their way. We know if it's brown primer, it's probably someone's been mixing the the the, the, the mixing the systems together. <laughs> that's, just, that's just everything together. Any, any drawing that your kids do, any drawing that you try and do, mix all the colours together. You're going to get brown. Whatever. You, <laughs> that, that's just the way it is. Worth pointing out. I think we missed it actually. The the the, the, the two different types, but the quick build base stays the same, doesn't it? We, I, I'm not sure if we mentioned that. The, yeah. the, 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 the the base primer is the base primer. It's the activator and converter or hardener and, and activator that, that that change it between the surfacer and the sealer. Have I got that's right, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, the bases remain the same. So all you need to do is buy those six different bases. But then as long as you have the converter and activator for the surfacer and the sealer separately, you can make it do whatever you want. So it's a it's a multi-purpose base with specific converter and activators. I'm sure anyone that's watching this that's ever tried to spray all grip lemon yellow or, or international orange in anybody's paint, probably quite excited about those colours, yeah. but uh, there you go. Um, okay, so let's, uh, if Chris is uh, around, we'll just see if we've got some questions on the on the quick build primer. Hello, yeah. Um three pretty good questions actually uh what are the size limitations to quick builds uh so how big a boats can you use it on or is it just for components actually do you know what that is a good question the reason that's a good question because i guess the clues in the name it's quick which means it's a fast product it dries quickly which means you're going to struggle with your wet edge so there is a limitation on size as a as a single user um you could obviously increase the number of painters you have on there and try and chase it off as you as you spray the boat but i would put a limit on there of sort of 10 15 meters is a is a maximum but when you start using the product it'll make sense and you'll understand what i mean it's about chasing that wet edge and the reason i'm mentioning that not so important on the surfacer because you will sand it prior to your top coat going on but if you're using the sealer that means it's a wet on wet application so if you've got any texture in there due to uh, dry spray, then you're going to struggle. So you need to make sure that you keep that wet edge. Actually, uh, thinking about that, just to add to that, that that um, uh, serpentine cafe roof we showed back in the SE presentation, that was done with um, quick build surfacer in black. And when that when, when they were made out of separate pieces, but when they got all the pieces together, they they did struggle. They loved it because it was so quick. But they did they did have a few bit of uh, bit of dry spots to to get rid of because uh, the overlaps with because it's such a big square area, getting to the middle was a problem. But uh, um, I think I remember you did something on your own boat, Rich, didn't you? Where you you you, you left it for an hour, two hours, and then you were walking on it for the deck to put on the second coat. Is that right? Yeah, well, it's uh, I guess that's the beauty of working in a paint company that I was able to demo uh, a, a no risk demo when before we sort of launched in the product at a at a yard. And um, the beauty of this was I was I was able to flash over the deck, um, drop down, do the hull, and then. By the time I've mixed some more products, got back up there, I'm able to walk over it again. So, you know, it's it's a pretty am amazing product in, you know, in my opinion. And, you know, don't take my word for it. Buy some, have a play with it. But um, it's a it's a system and I'm stressing it again that is fast, but it's fast for a reason. 
Any of you see Richard? Ask him what he ask him what he sprayed sprayed the logo on on the side of the boat. He'll tell you about that one. I'm sure on a later date. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, Chris, what else have we got? Uh, is the surfacer a wet on wet primer? Can you use it without sanding and go straight into a top coat, or do you have to sand it? The you have to sand it. The the sealer is the the one where you, there's two ways to make paint stick, right? There's chemically or or mechanically. So you either have to be within that chemical window. Um, or mechanically, you have to put a, a scratch profile on it. So that, that you can overcoat with any product within a, a chemical window, but it's aesthetically how it looks because you've smacked on three coats of a of a product that could be peely. You're going to want to sand that texture out before you top coat it. The reason for the sealer is um, you can then just put one smooth coat on and go wet over the top. If you're using the surfacer, you're always going to need to sand because there's going to be texture in it. OK, um, and just one last one. Uh, so because this primer is tintable, does that cut down on the the number of coats you need of top coat if they're like pearl coats or, as you said, orange and lemons that are, are very low opacity covers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but yes, absolutely. That's one of the key things that it helps, because if you and, you know, people want to talk. Let's just talk about paint generically. Started my career as a painter. All all yellows are difficult. Doesn't matter who manufactures it. It's it's a characteristic of the pigment bases of a yellow. So what happens with the this type of product is you can you can get commercial hide by covering it all. And then you're only going to need two coats, Chris, rather than or what three coats, should I say, rather than seven or eight to get the get the opacity. So it helps for sure. Cool. Okay, Rich, I've got a question for you. Sorry to sorry to, to ambush you with it, but I think uh, we've run out. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you've um, if you if you we, you know we've got people that are top coat uh, priming components in quick build surfacer. Um, they're, they're priming them in the morning and they're you know coming back after lunch and, and and sanding them. If you come back after lunch and sand it, and you're starting to break through in a few places, you haven't got your fairing quite right, but and and you need more primer on it. Can you go again with the surfacer? Yeah, or well, why not flash a bit of sealer on there just to, just to cover up the grin through if, if you haven't, as long as you're using the appropriate sanding method and you're not going to have sand scratch coming back through. But if you just want to cover up a grin through, you have the ability of, of even making it even quicker by putting a bit of sealer over the top um, just to cover the grin through. Or if you're concerned, then yes, you can go over the top and then you'd have to re-sand just that area. But it's yeah, it's, it's got a lot of a lot of scope. Yeah, it can speed some it can speed some small boats and component boots up. That's for sure, by the sounds of it. Yeah.